this video, we're going to talk about ethical egoism, one of the universalistic theories of ethics, and let's go ahead and get right into it. Ethical egoism is the ethical theory that every person ought to do what is in their own best rational self-interest. Now, that's not the same thing as egotism, which is the disposition of a person who's arrogant, boastful, self-centered, all I care about is me. It's not that exactly. It's that I should only do, and everyone should only do, what is in their best rational self-interest. So some of the key claims of ethical egoism end up being individual happiness is the greatest moral good. People achieve their happiness by pursuing their rational self-interests, and people ought to pursue their rational self-interests. Now, ethical egoism is not the same thing as psychological egoism. Psychological egoism is the view that people do act in their own self-interests. That would be, however, some kind of observation. Ethical egoism is a prescriptive theory of meta-ethics saying this is what people should do. And again, what people should do is pursue their own rational self-interests. So what does it mean to pursue your own rational self-interests? It means you should only do that which is best for you rationally. Now that's not the same thing as some sort of naive hedonism. I'm going to do whatever I like doing. You might want to do something that actually would not be in your rational self-interest. There might be something out there that you want to do that you have the inclination to do, but it would not be the right thing for you to do because it would be against your rational self-interest. But according to this view, everyone ought to pursue their own rational self-interest. You should do what's best for you. Now, does that mean you don't care about other people? Well, you do, but only if they're of value to you, at least according to some ethical egoists. Now, a well-known ethical egoist who wrote in the 20th century was Ayn Rand. In fact, she wrote a book called The Virtue of Selfishness, where she says people ought to pursue their own rational self-interest because we as individuals are of supreme value to ourselves. And therefore, it's good for us to pursue the propagation of ourselves. To maximize ourselves shall inevitably produce our own happiness. Now, some of the other theories that we're going to talk about, deontology, utilitarianism, virtue ethics, she's quite critical of. And she also says that laissez-faire capitalism, an economic system which is based on the pursuit of rational and prudent self-interest, individual freedom, and minimal governmental interference, in her view, is the best possible economic system and is in accordance with objectivist values. Her particular brand of ethical egoism and some of her other stuff to her epistemology, all her thought is referred to as objectivism. Consider what she says here out of her virtue of selfishness. Metaphysically, life is the only phenomenon that is an end in itself, a value gained and kept by a constant process of action. Epistemologically, the concept of value is genetically dependent upon and derived from the antecedent concept of life. To speak of value as apart from life is worse than a contradiction in terms. It's only the concept of life that makes the concept of value possible. So what she's saying there is the notion of value only comes from life. Our lives, because our lives that we each individually possess are the only lives that we have. She continues, the pleasure pain mechanism in the body of man and in the bodies of all living organisms that possess the faculty of consciousness serves as an automatic guardian of the organism's life. The physical sensation of pleasure is a signal indicating that the organism is pursuing the right course of action. The physical sensation of pain is a warning signal of danger, indicating that the organism is pursuing the wrong course of action, that something is impairing the proper function of the body, which requires action to correct it. What she's saying here is that pleasure is good and pain is bad, but more than that, it has a natural function. Pleasure is orienting you to that which is good for you, and pain is warning you that whatever you're doing is bad for you. Stop it. So consider this practically. Should I go to college? Is that in my rational self-interest? If your rational self-interest is to do something to enable you to get a career that's beneficial to you, do it. If you're doing it to please somebody else, it's not necessarily in your rational self-interest. Also, part of the cost of incurring debt and taking on student loans might make pursuing a college career not in your rational self-interest. If the debt ends up being too severe, such that you might be making a decent salary when you get out of college, but your student loan payments are so oppressive that it doesn't really matter. If that were the case, pursuing college then would be against your rational self-interest. Again, this doesn't mean that we pursue pleasure indiscriminately. For example, a completely random sexual encounter might seem like a pleasurable idea at the time, but the ramifications thereof may not be in your own rational self-interest. Yes, it might be pleasurable, but it might be disastrous. You could potentially contract some kind of disease. You're engaging in sexual activity with someone you don't know. It might destroy relationships that you already have, especially if you're already in some kind of relationship with someone else. 
So just because something's pleasurable doesn't mean that it's good. Pleasure is good, it directs us, and pain also directs us away. But here, the added layer on top of it is that we need to pursue our rational self-interest. So that concludes our talk on ethical egoism here. In the next video, we'll start taking a look at utilitarianism.